Yeah, I like it though. I like learning. Well, you're learning that business, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. The Joint Economic Development Organization Committee uh, organization will come to order, and uh, we will proceed with the roll call. The clerk will call the roll. Mayor Wolgas. Here. Deputy Mayor Hiller. Here. Councilmember De La Isla. Here. Councilmember Cohen. Here. Commissioner Cook. Present. Commissioner Bueller. Here. And Commissioner Archer. Those are the voting members. Uh, you have the agenda before you, and well, there are no changes or to the agenda as, uh, as printed. Uh, the second item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the meeting of the uh, March 25, uh, 2015 meeting. Are there any um, points, objections, corrections, revisions that uh, anyone wants to make to those? Mr. Mayor? Yes. At this time, I'd move for approval of the minutes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cook has moved to approve. Uh, Commissioner uh, Bueller seconds. We have two persons who signed to speak. This is an action item. Uh, Mr. Ledbetter. I'll wait for it. All right. Okay. Uh, Mr. Trammell. Good evening, one and all. Good evening. Uh, I have no real comments other than I want to acknowledge that I have sent you my comments via email, three of them in the last week. The last one was today. And the last one entailed a very interesting and appreciated discussion that uh, member Archer and I have been dialoguing about the input for item number three. And I want to make sure that those notes are of record, <coughs> which they were asked to be by this nice young lady who I applaud. She's excellent. And I'm giving you all a hard copy in case you couldn't remember all that I've sent to you in hopes that it will have a positive impact on this dialogue because my intention is to be proactive and a part of the positive discussion in this decision, this very critical decision. So thank you for this opportunity. Okay, thank you for your comments. Mayor. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Harmon. Thank you. I, I apologize. Um, the minutes reflect that, uh, that I'm absent for the March 25th meeting. I was actually present. Actually, it is down under approval. It says where Councilman Har Harmon entered the room. Oh, I was late. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. I, I know that. Okay, thank you, and I apologize so, for that. Change that around. Uh, <coughs> we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Um, and again, only the voting members vote. Um, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Okay. All right. We have four. Four yes and one four abstention. Four yes and one abstention. And so the. Okay. No, okay. We had four, four yes and one abstention. That completes the second item. The third item is the discussion and possible action of the proposals received from uh, professional consultants. And I, I think it'd be helpful to provide some background and talk a, uh, somewhat about what I would like the process to be for our deliberations here. Uh, the first point is that we put discussion and possible action. Certainly if action is taken, that there will be public comment. That is our, the rules of the, that we abide by. So there is always public comment allowed when there is any action item. Uh, we ask the, uh, the board members to rate the selection so that it would be helpful to our process to get us underway in this. And uh, what I would like to do is, <coughs> excuse me, we will go around and I would suggest that we perhaps only give our numbers one and two. There are nine of us here, and if we go into four, rating of four, and the reasons for all four take a very long span of time, 
perhaps when we go around with the ratings, we'll be lucky and maybe only one or two, most of us will agree on, and we'll out of this that we'll have a couple and then we can more focus on them. However, certainly we will have an opportunity for the board to discuss on any item that they wish. Um, and also what the ending is or where we hope perhaps that we end up on this is the, the role of looking ahead into the future. Um, and again, some background included in the RFP was the statement that JADO reserves the right to negotiate the proposal. Any and or no bidders may be required to appear before the board to uh, approach the questions and to describe their proposal and also to answer questions from the board. Uh, the bidders who are selected, uh, there can be ne negotiations with them uh, and those that we do consider, if we have uh, revisions or suggestions to them, they can submit an additional bid. Those are in the, the, that's a part of the bidding process that we use. And then we had the, um, the basis on which they would be considered. Um, and board members, in your, right under the listing of the four is the, the resolution on which um, they were to respond, uh, the Joint Economic Development Organization Resolution 2015, which was the RFP, uh, to, which they, uh, to which they responded. Uh, uh, another point of background, I think, for all of us, at the meeting in March, our, our previous meeting, we asked that if anyone had suggestions on companies that we would like to be like to consider, that we should receive those, send them to the the city, uh, to me or our our procurement person, and I want to tell you that 20 names, 20 firms were suggested for consideration, which I think is excellent. So they were all, they were just uh, in the list, they were made aware of the proposal when it was going out. We had 11 entities that responded. And when a, in the, I'm learning in the bidding process, they uh, enter our portal and enter into it so that then they receive all updates, all information. So we had 11 entities from across the country that indicated an interest in this. And out of that, then we have four proposals that we have before us tonight. Uh, also, we had a couple more of those 11, uh, or actually, and also I should say, some of those 11 were not in the 20 that we received the names of. So it went out nationally, so some responded on their own without being included in a, in a direct contact. Uh, we had four proposals sent, actually, and two other um, entities indicated a great deal of interest. They would like to do it, but they decided they did not have the time uh, right now. They had too many other contracts underway. Uh, so I think in general terms, we had an excellent response uh, on a national basis, uh, which I think says that maybe we, what we are doing, we have an organization and people are interested in and, and participating and want to be a part of it. Um, with, with that said, uh, and also we, we sent a, a note about some possible directions that could be taken tonight. Um, I would like to throw one out, and that is <coughs> that the end of the evening, uh, perhaps we could agree on one or two and then invite them to our May 13th JADO meeting, which is the next regular meeting, at which they would appear, uh, respond to questions, make a presentation to us, and then at that night we would make the formal decision or the <coughs> negotiate a uh, contract with one of the entities. So that's sort of an overview, and certainly this is the board, voting members make the decision, but I just thought maybe that's a parameter as we can look at, have that in mind as we start the process. Do you have anyone comment on what I've just described? Uh, Councilwoman Ortiz. Mr. Mayor, I know I'm not a voting member, but um, the, I, I wanna go back to the last vote. There was only four and one extension, and Mr. Colon didn't yeah. vote. 
That's correct. Does he know that he's a voting member and he yeah, can? He okay. Does. Okay. Yeah, thank just, you. Yeah. Okay. I just checked. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the voting members are uh, Delisla through Cohen right here. Mm -hmm. All right. Then we will proceed to the um, um, citing your uh, selections, the interesting process. Um, and you have a packet in front of you which lists them um, in case you didn't bring your own. And we have a list in um, place in alphabetic order in front of you. And what I thought we would do is just to give you an idea of the uh, go back and forth. I, I will state mine. We'll go to Commissioner Cook, uh, Deputy Mayor Hiller, Commissioner um, Bueller. And then we will um, go to uh, Council de la Isla. Uh, we'll read those of uh, co uh, co Commissioner Archer, give you the, what the order to go to Councilman Cohen, and then we'll go to the, um, the non-voting members um, going in the order of uh, Commissioners Clear or Council People Clear, Ortiz, uh, Jensen, and Harmon. So you know where, you're, where the order is of uh, when you will have the opportunity to give your sense. Uh, and for the first, I, I, would, I will say that uh, my choice or my ranking is I go with Garner Economics as my first choice um, based on I think they did the best job of clearly stating the objectives uh, and the approach on how they would, how they would answer that. Um, they had very clear directions. I, I think it was the most focused on Topeka. And um, I, I, I am going to, my second choice was, uh, is TIP or TIP, and I, I will stop there. I think those are the two that I would, I would consider uh, for us. I wanted to make one other comment. And as you, as you know, their uh, cost or their projected cost, including expenses, actually were reasonably in the, in the range. Um, there was no great outlier one way or the other, um, generally in the 75 to 80, 90,000 in that range. So I think, and in, in, in talking to others and something like this, that we really look at what they proposed, most importantly, and, all, and then we can look at the cost because also the cost is negotiable when we go, go back to them. If we want to add, delete, or something like that, that can be done. So I think we want to look at it really as which what best meets our, our objectives and what we want to choose. Okay, and with that, I will uh, call on Commissioner Cook. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In going through the four applicants, it's good to see the information that we received. It's good to see that we had a breadth of applicants to this process. <coughs> For my top two picks, I would have picked Avalanche and then Garner as being the two top picks. Okay. And we do have the, uh, ask the clerk to make a tally so that we can uh, have that, um, know what, about what they are. Um, okay, number three is uh, Deputy Mayor Hiller. Um, in order to score them, I, I took a, a first run through them. They all looked like very competent companies. And what I did was went back and pulled our resolution from last time and tried to refresh on what our priorities were, why we were doing this process which was not to hire somebody to do the job, but somebody, as I understood it, who could back up. We were wanting to look at um, a broad view of economic development, not just the traditional big box and site development, but all kinds of, and we itemized them, actually, in our resolution that we wanted to look at big business, small business, entrepreneurship, quality of life even. We wanted somebody to look at that broad brush um, we also, from being Topeka anyway, really want a deep and broad city. So I look for people that talked about that broad view. And we also want a deep and broad citizen input. And so I looked at which ones we're talking about the usual, if you will, which is to talk to the industry, top people in, the, in, in business. And I looked for ones that talked about talking to people in all walks of life from all over the community. Um, also, we don't have any staff, so I, I, I understand it's negotiable, but I looked for ones that understood that they needed to do most of the work rather than expecting us to do most of the work to set up their contacts. 
Um, back to the input, I looked at how much input they were planning, how many focus groups, how many individual contacts. Um, we were really interested in performance metrics, and so I was really looking to see who mentioned performance metrics in more than just a passing two words, because that was very important to all of us. And then I looked at their experience in different models of delivery. And so with that, I really felt like a Tip and Garner were doing the same thing we already had, and that I might hire them, but I wasn't going to hire, I was not going to support having them be our consultant. Avalanche um, really got three out of three on all those categories that I picked out to rate on. Um, and then Place Consulting um, was, was weak on a number of them also, actually. However, their experience had some strong retail and downtown experience that the others didn't. And I knew from public conversation that people might be interested in at least that balance of experience. So I picked Avalanche first and Place Second. Okay. Commissioner Bueller. My first choice is Avalanche. Um, based on, uh, I did the same thing that uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Hiller did. Uh, went back to the RFP <clears throat> and looked to see exactly what we had talked about. Um, for me, they had six focus groups. Um, that was the most um, and than any other proposal. And they had the depth of experience, I thought. And um, I was intrigued by the community wellness indicators as well. And so um, that would be my first choice. And then second would be Garner. And um, uh, they, were, they had some measurements, but I just like the approach that uh, Avalanche, Avalanche had over okay. Garner. All right, good. Uh, Councilwoman Dela Isla. <coughs> Thank you. I would agree with Ms. Um, uh, Commissioner Bueller with the sense of avalanche, what I really appreciated about them was that we've, we've already had a taste of what they have to offer. I was very impressed when they came here and they were very candid with regards to the deficiencies that were um, found when they were doing their investigation. Um, I really liked the, the, the focus on small business development on the downtown, which are things that I feel that we have been disconnected with in our economic development models. So that would be my first choice. My second choice, I was very impressed with um, the delivery of Garner. I think that when you look at them, for me personally, they outline a little bit better what we have asked for in a way that is very simple. And of course, after that, we're gonna be the ones that are gonna have to designate somebody to work with them and give them further um, information on where they would go. But those are my two. All right. Uh, next is, um, I'm going to, uh, Commissioner Archer uh, prepared his recommendations and, and sent them to us as we ask everyone, especially if they couldn't be here, to do that. And his choices are first, uh, are Gurner, and his second is Avalanche. Um, next, we will go to um, Councilman Cohen. Thank you. Um, is there any time during this time when I can ask some questions um, to those who are more seasoned than me? Well, I thought we would just go around and do okay. this, and then on our discussion, we will just open it up and okay. and perhaps have that. If he wants to pass it. If you can, is this, no is one has to make, uh, I, I meant to say that, no one has to make recommendations or choices, okay. and um, if, for any reason, and, and particularly um, when you haven't had the background of being through the last two meetings where we discussed this in depth, certainly that's understandable. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you could be stating more specifically, maybe in the discussion. Thank you. Thank you for your consideration. You yes. Okay. Um, next is Councilwoman Clear. Briefly from trying to ingest all this information, I have picked two, but I'm with Council Member Cohen. Um, but I'll go ahead and tell you my two. Okay. So the first one would be Garner. Okay. And the second is tip. All right. Fine. But I will ask questions. All right. Very good. Um, Councilwoman pass. Ortiz. Or um, to pass. Mm -hmm. um, Councilman Jensen. Uh, my two from my brief entry into this endeavor would be Avalanche first and then Garner second. <coughs> All right. Um, Councilman Harmon. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mike. 
everybody else, I uh, I read the read the proposals, and what I did uh, is I uh, compared it to uh, to the parameters of the RFP and <coughs> see how how closely they they came. I ranked them uh, Garner first, uh, Tip second, Avalanche third, and Place fourth. The only uh, consternation I had about Garner was the uh, focus groups. The wrong one. I'm sorry, the, I didn't hear you. The only the focus groups okay. on Garner. I think they only had four, mm -hmm. and I think yeah, on page yep. twelve. I think it's going to need more than four focus groups. Mm -hmm. uh, that was my only uh, source of uh, uh, concern with Garner. Um, but Garner, excuse, yeah, Garner one, tip second, Avalanche third, and place fourth. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, the uh, clerk and uh, assistant um, legal, would you want to sort of give an overview? I didn't keep very good pathway. Yeah. Looks like Avalanche received five. Number one, six. Five number six. ones. Right. Well, out of voting. Right. You want to go through just the voting members or all the members? All the members. Okay. <laughs> three, one, two, three, four. So Avalanche received four number ones. Garner received one, two, three, four. <coughs> So it looks like they're the top two. Okay. Yeah. Who else received a number one choice? Or were there others? No, they're the only ones. Those, those, those only one. received mm -hmm. number ones were Avalanche and Garner. Correct. All right. And what were the what were the seconds? Number two, it looks like Garner received three, and um, Tip received three. Place received one. Number two. All right. Okay. So Avalanche received four first choices. Garner received four first choices and three second. Place received no first, one second. And Tip received no first and three seconds. Correct. And that's about correct. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Mayor? Yeah. I, Commissioner Cook. I don't know that that's completely accurate. I don't know that it's really relevant either, I know. I know. given that we're looking. I mean, it's clear who the top two are, but I disagree with the clerk's calculation. Okay, uh, Yes. Okay. So I just wanted to note that for the record. All right. But again, I don't know how relevant it really is, given that we have two very clear people <laughs> yeah. at the top. And I, I think that's a good point. If that generally it's we have right these for two. Avalanche. Five. To, Five for avalanche. Yeah, yeah we can yeah. give or take one. We're still pretty much sure that those two uh, would be the ones, the two that we would be considering. Five. Five. Five for avalanche. That's correct. It's five, five for, for avalanche. Five, five for avalanche. avalanche. Four, four for garner. Agree with you. Yes. Okay. And four for garner. Four. <coughs> garner. Okay. Four. 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 All right. Four number two. She didn't count. Brandon. Okay. All right. Uh, Councilman Cohen, you had some questions. Would you like to? Request any information? Oh, I'll probably have a few more questions before the night's over. Um, first being, has any of these four um, done business with us in the past? With Go to Pika, with Jado? With Jado. I don't start believe. There. To my knowledge, I look at the people, we have not had a um, consulting contract that I'm aware of. Okay. Mr. Mayor, Jado, oh, other than the uh, I, we have not, Jado mm -hmm. has not hired Correct. a consultant um, that I know of. And, however, um, Avalanche was previously retained right. yes. by GoTopeka to conduct a study. So they're, they, but, and, but not of the other three. Yes. Right. Not that I'm aware of. Um, okay. I was just going to ask about their performance um, on the work that they did um, for us already. Mm -hmm. I know um, Councilwoman Della Isla spoke to that a bit mm -hmm. in her comments. Yes. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Well, my experience, I was very impressed with the reports that we received. One of the things that I always look when we, when we hire a consultant, um, 
and it's, it's giving us a report as how candid are they being with regards to the findings. Um, they were very professional and they were very open about deficiencies that I think that the community had already started saying that there, 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 there has to be a change maybe in focus on what we were doing and that maybe that the time was ripe. And a lot of those trends were mentioned in their delivery. So I really appreciated that when, and I asked some pretty poignant questions and they did not hold back any punches. Okay. Other board members want to comment on that, on Avalanche? Mr. Yeah. Mayor. Yeah. I would just concur with the statements made by Ms. Uh, Councilwoman Mandela Isola towards Avalanche. Um, I personally found them to be responsive during the public meetings, very open to listening to a lot of different inputs, a lot of different perspectives on what Topeka and Shawnee <coughs> County is, what it could be. Uh, but they were hired for a very specific purpose, mm -hmm. and so this is a little bit different than what we, what they had previously <coughs> worked with Shawnee County or Go Topeka rather. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's important to distinguish that they were retained by Go Topeka, they performed for Go Topeka, mm -hmm. and they they de delivered a report to Go Topeka, which was then shared with Jado. So. And their, the purpose of their work was to study uh, what areas uh, Go Topeka should target to get um, interest, you know, what are the areas do we go to get new companies, jobs coming into the community? And uh, so they, they did that type of review. Yeah, Councilman DeLisa. And in addition to that, one of the things that we were going for when we were looking at the, at the list of people that Garner had works with, um, their asterisks say that they've worked with people more than once and they, they mentioned with an asterisk, Greater Chamber Topeka, uh, um, Topeka Chamber of Commerce. So Garner also says that they have also worked with Topeka. Okay. I'm not sure when. Okay. <laughs> okay. Other questions that you have? That is it okay. for right now. Mm -hmm. All right. We have two. Uh, perhaps that we we open discussion um, and maybe with Avalanche <coughs> first. Since they, if they received five, would no, no matter, or they're alphabetical, we can go alphabetical order, and they're number one. Uh, perhaps if um, people would comment on them, um, those that that's selected them gave their reasons of support. Uh, is there, are there other comments or any um, questions that we would have about Avalanche? Deputy Mayor Hiller. Well, I will add to the comments of my colleague to my right. I um, I was impressed with the avalanche approach. I, I did participate in one of the focus groups. There were a variety of us in that focus group, and it was clear that they were they were good at pulling information out of people. They also, I felt, really understood during that visit how how deeply and broadly we wanted to engage the public that we already had that's one of the reasons we were we were looking at, at moving forward in some different at least exploring some different ways and with um as as commissioner bueller said too the way they talked about six focus groups but also lots of individual consultations and they specifically talked about going deep and broadly into the community i felt like they heard us <coughs> rather than just did a boilerplate kind of a of a, of a proposal and on that and other things like the performance metrics and so those those were very positive notes for me from that experience okay, I, uh, I'm sorry Councilman Harmon. thank you Ron you're still soliciting comments about avalanche, avalanche yes. yeah my only my concern about avalanche is the fact that uh, they did uh, recently complete a target market analysis even though I was very pleased with their work. Um, my, my fear or my reluctance is that they might uh, simply recreate the wheel that they, that they did last time, although <coughs> the parameters of the work isn't identical. I would feel more comfortable having a brand new company with, without any previous ties to Topeka to do the work. And I don't mean that as a criticism of Avalanche, but, uh, but my fear is that we would get better information a more independent analysis if it was somebody other than Aval other than avalanche 
for the fact that they've recently worked with us. So having, having said that, I think whoever does the work should, should uh, you know, read and understand what the target market study was and conclusions reached, but uh, I think we're better off having a, another company. Thank you. And I, I will comment because that's what I was going to comment on is, um, and, and this, this differs in our, in our opinion, mm -hmm. um, I did not feel that they were as specific in their evaluation comments, proposal, pertaining to Topeka as much as Garner was, or is. Um, also an interesting thing, they all, since they have already been here, but um, um, they take 20 weeks, most of them give 16 weeks, um, and if they've already been here, I would think they would have a leg up on what they're doing, and maybe I would thought they would maybe comment more in here about we've already done this, this, and this, and we won't have to do that again. So, you know, I think it's just, this is, this is my reaction in looking at it, and um, certainly that's, that's just one view. Um, Councilwoman, go ahead. Maybe I should wait, but, uh, I, you know, and just for point counterpoint, I felt like the fact that they've been here recently, uh, I want to bang for my buck, and everybody else was talking about basically repeating what they did. And obviously somebody should look it over, but I felt like they were already deep enough into who we were that we could start from there instead of start over. Mm -hmm. and, and that, to me, seemed like an advantage. I also, you know, if those shorter time frames back to citizen participation, I don't remember which one it was now, I could find it, but it was, they were going to have one stakeholder group go back with high-level people, go back and think about it and come and report to us. I would rather that it took them longer and they spent more time um, with getting the feedback from the community. So we could probably negotiate that time frame, but that didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's worth it to spend the time. That's what we wanted to do, I thought. So thank you. Yes. Councilman Jensen. A uh, quick question. Does anyone know if the current project team listed is the same that worked on the previous project? Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, at least some of them, they, they list the whole everybody in working for them, but in a sense, they were the people who were here. Some of them were here. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Given Mayor. that it's clear that we have Avalanche and Garner at the top of the pick for the uh, voting and non-voting members, and given that um, I don't know that I'm in a position today to say one is better mm -hmm. than the other or to negotiate contract, I think that it is appropriate, as you have suggested, <laughs> that we extend an invitation to both Avalanche and Garner to attend the May meeting uh, to make presentations to the board, and at that point we would then take action. Not taking action today, but rather um, extending an invitation would be the decision of the board today to invite Avalanche and Garner to come. We might be able to take that time between today and May's meeting to uh, further digest the difference between the two, what specifically we're wanting them to do, and then later make a decision on which, if any, of the firms we would want to hire, and then have the uh, contract negotiated, terms mm -hmm. of the contract, payment, et cetera. Good, good point, uh, and well taken. Uh, Councilman Delisla. Since <coughs> we're having the conversation of engaging two groups and having a possibility of inviting them, my question then would be, JADO at this point in time has no staff. Mm -hmm. So therefore, who is going to be the point uh, contact for these individuals as they're going through this process? Well, and I, that's one of the issues I th is appropriate for us to discuss with them. How much, how much do we, will we be required or requested to do? And I know in one of these, not even one that isn't our top two, uh, states specifically almost a lot. A lot that we need that they want help and they list mm -hmm. the the chamber and go to peak as, as setting up the, the events and etc um, and I and these other the top two did not do that I think but we have to plan that and I think that's in a conversation that we have with them um, and I hope that we can have a better proposal when we talk well we'll know better what we need to be doing when we talk to them also okay um, now we don't. Immediately, is it your staff? Call them. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> who's going to invite them for the 13th? Your staff. Well, I think that would be from Jado. Yeah, I would okay. do that. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that would be appropriate to do. Okay. I agree. Okay. Now, I don't want to do limit in the conversation. Uh, if, if this is fine where we are, it, no reason to delay uh, proceeding ahead. Um, and I, I think at this point would be, so I, I think perhaps we have a, a motion to invite those here and a second, we won't vote, and then we will have public comment. Does that sound appropriate to do? I think we'll let Mr. Mr. Mayor, Cook. Yes. I would so move that we invite the representatives from Garner and Avalanche Consulting Groups, respectively, to attend the JDO meeting in May to make presentations to the board and as to what they can do, how they would fulfill the terms of the request for proposal, and uh, we may be able to interview them and ask them questions directly. Right. And okay. that is the motion. All right. Second. Okay. And Deputy Mayor Hiller seconds. All right. And then uh, we will proceed at this point for our public comment. The first person is Joseph Ledbetter. <coughs> I got a call. Yeah, I Evening, Jado members. Uh, Joseph Ledbetter. <clears throat> uh, listening to the conversation, uh, I remember uh, two meetings ago, uh, Avalanche was here. Uh, they said a couple things that I thought were relevant, like poverty was going up, which I could read in the newspaper myself, and uh, <laughs> that uh, the Census Bureau has said that for the last several years, poverty is up in Shawnee County. And our economic development <coughs> obviously is not addressing that or working on that. <clears throat> but I also heard tonight that they sought broad input and uh, they were seeking different focus groups. They didn't seek the public. Uh, my group was not invited. <laughs> Citizens for Accountability and Government was not invited to uh, meet with these people. Uh, I think we're just as important and just as big as stakeholders as uh, <clears throat> others. Uh, that they met with, whoever that was. And so the fact that they had a recent contract with Go Topeka uh, concerns me. Uh, I'm more concerned with somebody that's more arm's length and hasn't uh, had as much involvement with Go Topeka, especially in light of recent changes at Go Topeka. Uh, so uh, I'm, uh, you know, I. I've heard some people say some good things about this garden group, but I don't know. I don't know firsthand. I don't have any knowledge of them. Um, so whoever is picked needs to uh, solicit broad input from the public. That's mm -hmm. not just uh, a former uh, chamber president slash go to Pika president. That is the public that mm -hmm. pays these taxes and wants answers and finality to are we going to have transparency or not? And what are we going to do about that? Because we're going to have transparency. It's coming. It's going to happen. And it cannot be stopped. It's public policy of the state with public monies. Uh, <clears throat> I'm concerned when I hear people uh, on this board talk about how much involvement they had at different things that the public was not invited to. Uh, the public I'm talking to is fed up with the backroom deals, whether it's in elections or whether it's JDO or economic development. They want transparency. They want accountability. They want to know where these millions of dollars went. They're not being answered. I myself uh, requested information from Go Topeka a few days ago asking who they've been involved with with this list of uh, consultants that had uh, submitted proposals and of course I got no answer as per usual <clears throat> and uh, yet that's public money and I have a right to know what they're spending on these consultants I'd like to know what they spent on Avalanche when Avalanche was here <clears throat> one of the things that did concern me about Avalanche and I'm not trying to pick on them but my gosh I had to give the answer uh, not that I had to but I did as to why we had lost uh, so many distribution jobs I remember very clearly they didn't know that answer and they said well we've been here since 2009 and we don't have the answer Mr. Harmon as to why we lost some distribution jobs. But fortunately I had my computer with me and I looked up an article that I remembered from 2009 where we had lost 550 jobs with Payless. Now 
How relevant is that? That a citizen has to answer the question for the consultant because the consultant doesn't know. Even though they said on the record they've been here on and off for Go Topeka since 2009. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, that's enough of my comments on that. Thank you. Thank you. And I, board and mem uh, public, as you know, we didn't have a specific sign up on this item. We had people sign up for number five public comment. And I am going down that, and I think most of those, this is the, ma the only major item on the agenda, so we'll consider this list. Uh, and then, of course, because we didn't have this listed as an action item, uh, it will be, a, other people will be able to speak to it if they wish. Second person on the list is Clark Trammell. I know, but they can, we can go over public comment again. I think that's the thing. Again, good evening. I applaud you all for the discussion you just had. And I want to bring this back into the focus for those of us who may have lost it, <coughs> that what we're imparting on now is an incredible opportunity to do some very dynamic and exciting things for this community that reach all the way to our roots, to the top of the trees that come from those roots. And it's most important that every decision along the way, and I've sent this information to you, I'm not lecturing, I'm talking to you as a businessman that's done this for over 40 years, it's important that you get every step right and that we go through step one, two, three, four and on. We don't go from one to three to eight to 10. And that we make smart decisions, we ask the hard questions and we don't go on until we get the answer that's appropriate. Mr. Harmon, I appreciated the question that you mentioned about Avalanche. I vetted every candidate that you stated that you were considering. And I only found a couple, which even weren't in this last list, that were acceptable. My biggest problem is that you are considering people that have done work for Go Topeka. And the perception and the problems that business people visualize that go with that sort of relationship. But on the other side of this, I will say that Avalanche was an impressive group, and I would have hired them in one of my companies. Garner is a very fine group, very powerful, and they read well. I hope they present well. So I think if you're gonna pick an existing candidate of a relationship that has been in this room before through a contractor, that you've picked two that can do the job, but be very careful with how that you coordinate that with them. The information that Avalanche <coughs> has provided, Councilman Hiller, mm -hmm. I want you to be aware that the contractor is not gonna reinvent that wheel. They're gonna take that database that you're going to give them and work from that as part of their platform to go forward. So that doesn't present a problem for me if I were dealing with them. To Ms. Daly Isla, I thank you yeah. for your comment, and I would tell you all that as this board, you are going to be involved directly. You have to be to make sure they understand what you want, what they're doing, and that you're actively making sure they stay between the lines and give them what they need to do this job. Don't fool yourself that you're not going to be. You will be. You must be. Beyond that, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this discussion. I can't tell you how excited I am to see this turn in this direction by a group of people that I'm looking at, each one of you face to face, that I think has the skill set collectively to do this very, very well. Good luck and thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next, Jim Lord. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll take a pass tonight. All right. All right, thank you. Uh, Scott Griffith. <clears throat> Good evening and welcome to the new members of uh, JADO, uh, whether you're voting or non-voting. Glad uh, uh, to have you here. Uh, tonight I wanted to just share with you a couple of things or just uh, say a couple of things. On behalf of the Go to Peak board, and, and for those of you who may not know, I am the current uh, chair of that board. Um, I would like to restate that uh, we are very supportive of this effort. We think this is a good process to, uh, to go through. Uh, and we think hiring a qualified 
consultant to uh, advise you on the economic development uh, objectives, strategies, and expectations for our community is going to be a healthy exercise for us to go through. Now, while we believe we've been employing best practices and have been quite effective in attracting and retaining new business uh, <clears throat> in industry during the past 10 years or so, we are always open to learning how to enhance our economic development work. The firms that have submitted the proposals in response to your RFP uh, appear to be very experienced and very well qualified organizations capable of doing the work that you've requested. I think all of these proposals are worthy of consideration. Uh, I enjoyed listening to your conversation uh, and discussion about the, uh, the firms and the two that you're going to invite back. Um, and whether or not these firms have done work for Go Topeka or our community in the past, I think they are certainly capable of maintaining their independence as they complete work for JADO. Um, and, and so <clears throat> in spite of what's been said, I think Avalanche, for the most recent example, is certainly worthy of your uh, serious consideration. That said, in making your selection, I would consider, uh, please consider the thoroughness of the proposals uh, to ensure that the firm's qualifications are most aligned with the scope of the work that you've defined and that you're asking for. I think it's important to retain a firm that will be completely open and honest with its assessment and, and recommendations. We have a lot of people here in Topeka, uh, in, in, in our community, that have economic development experience and we don't need a firm to come in here and tell us what we already know. We need a firm that will be, share its insights and examples that we can use to build upon for a strong foundation uh, <clears throat> already in place to move our community forward. Um, secondly, I'd like to share with you, <clears throat> there have been some changes at the uh, Go Topeka uh, and Chamber, as, as all of you know. And I want you to be aware that uh, uh, on behalf of Go Topeka, uh, we have several members of our board that are working closely on a day-to-day -day basis, weekly basis with Scott Smathers and his staff uh, to ensure that all the Go Topeka work continues uninterrupted. We're assisting them with administrative uh, issues and we're helping them stay organized and focused on the core work of economic development. The good news is uh, Doug built a, a good team uh, and we've got a good team in place today. In addition, I want you to know that <clears throat> a couple members of the Go Topeka Executive Committee and the Chamber Executive Committee uh, met today for the first time, and uh, we're starting the process to bring our two organizations together to uh, uh, start taking some next, tests, next steps to determine what we want to do um, uh, for our organizations. The next uh, meeting uh, that we're in the process of organizing will include our full executive uh, committees from our boards. Uh, will include uh, Scott Smathers and Curtis <coughs> Sneed, the acting presidents for the chamber in uh, Go Topeka. And we're going to have a facilitator. And <clears throat> we're going to have a conversation um, to really figure out what it is that we want for our community and for our organizations. And then from there, we'd anticipate opening it up to our members and stakeholders in our community to gather up some additional input. So I want to share that with you that we've started the process to really do uh, a self analysis and figure out where we are and where we want to go and uh, we'll keep everybody apprised along the way. So thank you very much for what you do. Good luck. Thank you for your comments. Next is Carol Marple. Okay. Uh, that completes the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Are there other members of the audience who wish to speak? Yes. I did sign up and got a reply back from Okay. Please, well, we, no, it was, yeah, and anyone can speak because this is, it was not listed, this was an action item. We've added it as that. Therefore, it is open for anyone in, in attendance to speak. Okay, but I did, I did ask to speak. All right. Number three, but it doesn't matter. I'm sorry, yes, Ms. Marple, you had a. May I ask a, I guess I missed well, it. Okay. public No, we will, we will give those who signed up for public comment the opportunity to speak during public comment. Thank you. And would you state your name, please? Yes, Evelyn Davis, and um, I live at Wakarusa, or in the Wakarusa community. And um, I guess my whole take on all of this is probably outside of the scope of what most people are looking at when they talk about economic development. But I'd like to suggest that the county and the city consider completely refocusing how to achieve goals for our community. We constantly hear growth, that word, growth. 
and it's the be-all, end-all of economic development. And I realize we have to have <coughs> jobs and employment in our community, but do we have to grow to achieve that? I would like to suggest that we begin to think about the term sustainability rather than growth and use that to refocus how we achieve the goals for our community. Sustainability is the endurance of systems and processes. The organizing principle for sustainability is sustainable development which includes the four interconnected domains of ecology, economics, politics, and culture. Sustainability takes into account all four of those interconnected domains, while growth in and of itself does not necessarily seek to find a fit among those four principles. Just recently I heard a report about how California is rethinking their push for welcoming and encouraging everyone to come to their state, of course in light of their extreme drought. And many of us knew long, a long time ago that that invitation was not sustainable without massive disconnects to the ecology of the Colorado River and other huge changes to our ecosystem. Our community has been stagnant in attempts to be like many other cities. We could achieve, I believe, a sustainable, high quality of life here if we quit looking at other cities and trying to com compete in the same arena with them. Find our own niche. Support our history, including historical properties. Set standards for new construction to achieve LEED, L-E-E-D, which is leadership in energy and environmental design. It's the green movement. And quit chasing after the same things that everybody else is chasing after. Developing the potential in underserved members of our community would be a big step in that direction. We hear almost every time at this JADO board meeting at least one member of the black community that is anxious to have help in unleashing the potential of minorities here. My second concern is seeking the help once again from outside consultants. We have had so many surveys and paid consultants that we seem to most generally ignore. Just one example, and there are many, and I'm sure those of you who've been around a while can think of them. I attended a community meeting uh, down at the building there on Jefferson uh, when a smart growth consultant was brought to Topeka. And after a write-up in the newspaper, that was the last the idea was ever heard of. So in conclusion, I'm hopeful that these two ideas, reinforcing, um, refocusing from growth to sustainability and to using outside consultants sparingly to be considered as Jado moves forth. Thank you very much. I appreciate thank you. your time. Thank you for your comments. <clears throat> Is there anyone else in attendance who wishes to speak on this uh, action item? Seeing none, we declare the uh, public comment to be closed. And board members, we have a motion and a second to um, select uh, or request um, uh, Avalanche and Garner two firms to appear at our May, I believe, 13 meeting uh, to make presentations. Is there any, dis any other discussion on the item? If not, all those in favor, uh, raise your hand. Okay, it is. We have six yes. Six yes, uh, the motion carries. Is there any other business items that need to come before the board for consideration? Seeing none, we'll go to item five, which is public comment. We had five people sign up for this, um, and that I have, if we can, we'll go through that. Um, first is Joseph Ledbetter. Evening, JADO members. Uh, I listened with interest as the uh, Go to Peak chair talked about changes that have happened recently uh, at Go to Peak, and we all know about it. Uh, my concern is where it goes in the future. And uh, so my first concern is, and I'm a public to say this, I'd like an outside audit of uh, all those public funds uh, for the past five years. I'd like to know where they went. I'd like to know the minutes. I want to know what the ratifications were, 
and how that money was ratified to be transferred in millions of dollars almost at a time to the Chamber of Commerce from our public funds. Uh, that is something that this JADO body could ask for and get. Uh, you have the contract, they have a three-year contract, and uh, you certainly have the right to demand that kind of accountability. It has not been forthcoming in the past. No matter who I've asked up here, uh, and I'm not including the new members, uh, these things have not been answered. They have not been answered by go to Pika personnel, their staff, lawyers, anybody else. Uh, I've asked a lot of questions, and I have gotten almost no answers that are satisfactory to me in what I'm looking for. And I represent now, not represent as a lawyer, but I am part of a group of citizens that's very concerned about what's going on in this community and the lack of transparency and the people that actually went door to door found that out among the people in the city in this last election. They actually were hearing this. I know because I was talking to people and they were saying, we're telling them. We're fed up. We want an end to this lack of transparency <coughs> with our economic development mon money. <clears throat> now, uh, he talked about we're going to involve the stakeholders eventually of this community of economic development. So who are the stakeholders? I'll tell you who the stakeholders are. The stakeholders are the citizens. The stakeholders are the NIAs. High Crest alone has 6,000 citizens. They're never consulted about economic development. Now I will tell you, I did invite Scott Smathers to one of our meetings about a year ago and he did show up and he did take questions. So I appreciate that. Uh, veterans are stakeholders in this community. There's 16,000 of them. They're never heard from. They're never asked anything about what can be done to help veterans with this economic development money? What can veterans do to enhance economic development in this community? The small business people, there's over 7,000 of us in this city that are small business. Uh, the chamber does not represent the majority of them. In fact, it's only a small percentage, maybe six or 700 <coughs> by their own records. So uh, they don't represent small business. When are the small business people gonna have a voice in economic development in this community? There's at least 7,000 of us. Uh, we feel like we've been left out, and we have, because we're not considered stakeholders. We're not part of the little focus groups when uh, the people are invited to come to them. Uh, conveniently, probably 98% of the population's left out. And uh, how convenient. And that's part of the problem, is the lack of public access to these dollars, the lack of public input, the lack of transparency, the lack of accountability of where these dollars have gone to the point that now uh, it was very obvious that there was interference in our last elections by a president of Go Topeka. So what are we <coughs> going to do about it? When are the real stakeholders going to be engaged? These are the questions I'm asking this body. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Second is Clark Trammell. I respect Okay, thank you. Jim Lord. Respectfully pass, thank you. All right. Scott Griffith. Uh, I'll pass, thank you. All right. Carol Marple. I'd like to thank you very much for listening to me. Um, I would like to say I very much agree with Mr. Ledbetter's comments and a lot of the Mr. Tremel's comments. I'm not as articulate as they are. Excuse me, Carol. Could you move to your right a little closer to the mic? Okay. There you thank go. Thank you. Thank you. I need all the help I can get. Um, I'm not as articulate as these gentlemen were. I'm going to probably be pretty blunt. I have heard statements about not staying on topics when these meetings occur, but I would like to say that it's very hard to stay on topic when the general public has no input in what is being discussed. 
At this moment, I am going to stray from the topic of hiring a consultant and present an example of what I think sums up a lot of the problems with Go Topeka. The handout that I made, I found this information out by Cora. I asked what the legal fees were being paid during the years 2011 to 2013. I'll let you folks do the math. The next obvious question is why they are so high, because I haven't seen any big deals lately. If you continue looking at the handout, you will see part of a contract that I will have to assume was gone, drawn up by the go to Pico attorney, but then again, maybe it was not. Whoever drew it up was very careful to make clear that the building in question was not owned by go to Pico. They were vague, though, about when the $50 a month rent payment was due. And I'll go back a second and reference that this is the building that's located on 77th Street that I seem to make a lot of comments about. Um, but no one, be it the attorney or the GoToPeka staff, ever put in the contract or checked to see that the building was removed from the GoToPeka tax statement. We, the taxpayers, have been paying the $1,225 a year on a building that we don't own. In case you need some help, Go to Pico received $600 a year for rent on the ground where this building is setting. But Go to Pico, the taxpayers, we pay $1,225 a year on taxes on this building. I don't even like paying my own taxes, but it irritates me beyond to pay somebody else's taxes. I feel that this is business 101 and that somebody should have been responsible for removing this from Go to Pico's tax statement, but no one did. And again, I want to remind you how much is being spent on attorney fees and wages in Go to Pico. I do think there are more examples of this kind of mismanagement going on. I think that we need a complete accounting for what is happening to our sales tax money. We need to see country club bills, trips that are being taken, salaries that are being paid. At this time, I would have to question if the timing is right to hire one of these companies. With Mr. Kinzinger no longer at the head of Go to Peak and the Chamber of Commerce, I would think now is the perfect time to make changes to both organizations. We don't have transparency or accountability in either organization. <coughs> the organizations need to be separated, the building, the staff, and no overlapping board members. I've got about 30 seconds if I could have it. Well, do you, board members, give? Even, okay. Well, second. Okay, we'll get. We'll assume thirty seconds. Okay. To complete. With what little the taxpayer has been able to learn about either organization, it appears to me that the cost to run these organizations need to be sharply reduced. In my opinion, until a basic internal reorganization takes place within Go to Pika, if that is even possible, nothing will change, no matter what a consultant says, plus the fact I have not heard how this consultant will be paid, who will have the input, and will you as elected officials even pay any attention? The, per the public has certainly been ignored. Meetings have been held with statements of change, but in reality they turn out to be, let me say what you want to hear and then I'll continue to do business or, as usual. I want to close by saying that at this time again, I do not feel that a, it is the right time to hire a consultant and it would be a waste of taxpayer money until we do some serious house cleaning. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. There being no further business before the board, the meeting is adjourned.